At first you think this is a rare sight. Then you realize it's just what life is in the New Forest, that breathtaking national park in the heart of Southeast England. Here wild ponies roam, horses and foals gamble and frolic, here donkeys are showstoppers and the cows come out to play. It's a slice of another life, a place where roads go ever on and on, where hearts with pleasure fill, where woods are lovely if not dark or deep. And yes, if I am reduced to such easy poetic cliches, forgive me. It's hard to think clearly when surrounded by this much charm and beauty. The new forest was proclaimed a royal forest in about 1079 by none other than William the Conqueror. That's right. It was used then for hunting, now happily not so much. It's a remarkable sprawl, 566 square kilometers, and it's dotted with villages and brooks with fairy tale cottages and garden greens where, well, everyone is encouraged to hang around. No species excluded. And everyone here seems to be grazing. It's clearly the thing to do. But then I've always known that. stopped in the village of Brockenhurst, which as you can perhaps tell, is that perfect English village brought to life, picked straight from the pages of a book, lifted straight out of a pretty pastoral painting, it's more charming than I can hope to convey. As is this, the Montague Arms, just look at it, the perfect English tavern, flowers, ivy, wood, down to the stone dog sitting guard. It's a 17th century house which used to be a coaching inn. I head inside, my eyes dazzled. There's so much to see. But most critically, I'm told, a high tea do hit up. Good afternoon, Alicia. Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Welcome to Montague Arms. Thank you. What a, what a beautiful place. Yeah, yeah, we're really lucky. The location we've got here with people really spoiled next yeah. to the river in the forest. Mm -hmm. And we're able to offer a lovely quintessential afternoon tea. I believe it's not just a quintessential afternoon tea, it's a very special, well awarded afternoon tea. It is, yeah, but it's got its traditional roots and we've added a little bit of a modern touch to it. Perfect. <laughs> Cannot wait. <laughs> Belly Hold rumbling you. and all of that. As you can see, the charm is not confined to the outside alone. Inside there are lots of intimate touches, lots of cushy corners and yes, a sunny one calling our name. We sit down and tea and trays arrive in no short order. And isn't that something? Pour ourselves a hot cuppa, as one must, and gear ourselves up to dive in. Once we're warmed up, it is time to turn our attention to the lowest tier. The savoury sandwiches, delicious ones too. Egg, salmon, ham and of course, because what's a high tea without them? Cucumber. Really terrific cucumber too. It's so simple, it's so elegant, and it's kind of timeless. Yeah. It's, you know, that sandwich now can have almost anything in it. Yeah. But it's stripped back to basics. It's just cucumbers. In the summer, they come from our garden. A simple sandwich, but there's also lots of variations. Do you peel? Do you not? Do you take the seeds out? Do you put them in? Do you... How much pepper do you add? Do you uh, add a little bit of it's dill? It's almost some infinite. Some mustard, yeah. <laughs> For something so simple. The next stage, the next tier, is of course the one with some scones dense and delicious. You slice, you slop on some of that unbeatable English clotted cream, add a dollop of jam and prepare to be transported. I'm not kidding. Cucumber sandwich, scones, um, watercress, high tea. Every single, I suppose, prepubescent, inner blight and fueled dream I had involving the English countryside has come to vivid, vibrant, delicious life. I do know yeah. what you mean. I think that's why we feel it's important. We yeah. try and look at everything we do, right. and afternoon tea included, yeah. and it should fit this beautiful building. It's been here a lot longer than uh, we are. It will be mm. here a lot longer than we are now. Yeah. It will continue. And I think our guests, like you say, when you come up the street and see that facade, you've almost built this image in your mind of what you're going to experience when you get in. And we want to hit that. Yeah. We want it to be elevated, right. but we, offer, we want to offer that style of service. Agreed. And I think this fits that perfectly. By the way, you should know how you eat your scone matters too. In England, it's very important which way round you go. If you're from Cornwall or Devon, we have different opinions of whether the jam or the cream should be at the top or the bottom. As it goes, I completely agree with you. Yeah. Jam at the top, that little hit of sweet, and then the bland cream no. underneath. But if you get it wrong, you can also just flip I was it. just going to say, <laughs> I was just yeah. going to say exactly that. <laughs> Upside down or right side up, I don't care. I'm about to dive into confectionery heaven. Perfect mini shoe, needing nothing more than whipped cream. 
a dense dark chocolate tart, passion fruit cheesecake, a macaron because of course, a knickerbocker, such a lovely name of lemon and raspberry and a dome gleaming with caramel. The inside like silk, the pastry perfection. This people is how you go from a high tea, an excellent thing on its own and turn it to an award winning one. Oh, it's just amazing. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, it's literally <laughs> like silk. And I can take absolutely no credit for that. <laughs> um, my pastry chef, Peter, is a, a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a I wonder. will. I, 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 it's been a bite, but I can attest. <laughs> I'm not a fan of ritual in general, but this, I confess, I am on board with. And the real kick, I think, lies in the fact that this can be silly or sophisticated, depending on exactly what you want out of it. A very traditional English hotel. Yeah we should be offering an excellent uh, yeah. afternoon tea. The great thing about afternoon tea is yeah. it can appeal to children because, you know, yeah. and it can also appeal to great, great grandma and granddad. You know, you can have age range from nine to 90 yeah. and all feel very comfortable, which in other aspects of the business, they may be a little bit right. of a, you know, a difference with what the kids want to eat. This appeals to everybody. It really and I think does. it's a lovely way into the hotel so you can sit here, spend a few hours, time drifts by, the ticking of the clock, the yeah. birds, you can forget the world, and just relax with your family. I cannot that's a argue. Way to do it. But all good things and all that. So yes, my day was off to a smashing start. The question was, what else would the area offer up? Well, it turned out they love their cheese here. We're of one mind there, and so I found myself wandering into the Lyburn farmhouse cheesemakers. They are the hospitable kind. You enter here not just for a taste, but for a tour as well. But first, and I confess I wasn't thrilled about it, I needed a wardrobe change. Yeah, I grant you not my best look. This better be worth it. Oh, it was. Just this room where curds are assembled was eye-opener enough. Just look at it. It's heavy, hard, bicep building work and they have it down to a science. I mean, I actually knew that. Seeing it happen just brought it home. The curds start setting almost immediately. So then from here, we go straight to here. These were made yesterday. Okay. Can I come in? Yep. And they are now just floating in a brine salt water solution uh, around 75%. Wow. They're just floating on the top. Quite Check it out. Soft. Wow. Mm -hmm. How come they're so solid already? Because that's the way we make them. Right. I knew that. On then to the next site I'm more familiar with. Wheel upon wheel of golden goodness. We make six varieties of cheese. Okay. They're all in the style of the Gouda. The okay. North European Gouda. All right. So that one there. Wow. That Ooh. was made about five weeks ago. Wow. Weighs around about five, six kilos. Nice. So good size. So if I misbehave, you basically have means to take me out, don't yes. you? Oh, yes. Yes. Huh? I've had one fall on my head. It hurts. I believe you. I believe you. We will not prove it, though, <laughs> no. if it's all the same to you. Eighteen months one. This is around about 16 months at the moment. Okay. So it's nearly ready for to be sent out. And the skin has changed, it's different, it's yeah. It's changed colour, yeah. As yeah. it matures, it uh, dries out. Yeah. And it, it does change colour as it loses the moisture. How many cheeses do you have in here? Uh, around about, we've got about 5,000 in this, this uh, these rooms here. 5,000 wheels of just this cheese? Of this, this cheese, yeah. Wow. But it turned out there was one other room offering something unusual. Can you smell? <laughs> oh boy, can I. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. But these are made differently. You can see the, the mould growing on them. Yeah. This is called Stony Cross. Stony Cross is a, a place in the New Forest. Right. Um, that used to be a, an air base during the war. Oh wow. And so it's named after that because it's, it's got the lovely colour of a, a stone. We just let it mould naturally in here uh, for three months. And, and then, then they start looking exactly like pavers of stones. Like so. Wow. So this one is ready to be sold. And this is, of course, this is edible mould, um, actually. Yes, yeah. oh yeah. Um, and we, we don't eat it, but you can eat it. It's, yeah. it's fine to eat. Oh boy, that smell is intense <laughs> and I love it. That's yeah. <laughs> it's not for the faint-hearted, but for those Look who love cheese, <laughs> It's beautiful. My 
olfactory nerves may never be the same. You must remember to thank them for it too, as well as for this little sampler they had out. And this again is, as you see, the perfect manifestation of that wonderful food movement from paddock to plate. In this case, probably within a square mile. This is really exceptional. Oh, this is... This is my mouldy friend. The Stony Cross. I expected, I suppose, again, those funkier mm -hmm. yeah. undertones, maybe even some sharpness or something, but it's yeah. actually very gentle, very creamy, mm -hmm. um, very lovely. Yeah. And I bet it lends itself to like a gazillion things. Oh, yes, very yeah. much. Uh, cheese toasties, very popular. Um, brilliant on cheese boards. Yeah. Um, the Old Winchester is uh, an excellent substitute for Parmesan. A lot of local chefs use it as a su uh, substitute for Parmesan. Did I mention that once you're done nibbling, you can just step outside and see where, well, the cows come home. This is a world unto itself, a throwback, a famous five sort of setting that just calls for an adventure. For me, as I explored its main streets, checked out the action around the stream, it's clear that mine will remain of the strictly culinary kind.